Hi everyone, happy Thursday night. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com and that, this is our last break of the night, 2021 Topps Chrome Baseball 12 box hobby case. Pick your team number two, which filled after pick your team three if you're wondering about the order. Uh, big thanks to this group here for getting in on the action. I appreciate it. Thursday the 26th, all right, pick your team two. Now if you have a little rooftop over your name like Travis does, that means you won a spot. Remember the we did like a, a filler pack we gave away some teams, so that rooftop means you won a team. So congrats. Sean A ended up getting the last team before we pulled out all those teams for, uh, for the filler. So that's why he's a little last spot mojo star next to his name. All right, good luck, gang. Now, um, I'll tell you what, the super search continues. I think this is the right case, right? Tops Chrome, H. The super search continues. Um, I, if you're just joining us for this video, um, I did a case, a hobby case, not too long ago, just a few moments ago before I started this video. No super. I think uh, on the personal break side, we've ripped a lot of hobby and jumbo boxes. No super. I think the closest we got was maybe Teddy Jaspi might have pulled like a, like a red wave or a red out of five or something like that. But otherwise... Well, I haven't even seen a red, to be honest with you. I'll be happy with a train whistle hit, but no super. The super search continues. So hang with me. Hang with me here because we just might see something special late at night. We just might see something special. I hope that's the case. The super search. I feel like, I mean, it's hard to say things like this. It's, it's like saying that a number in roulette is due, right? <laughs> but I feel like we're due. Actually, you probably can say that in the hobby because unlike roulette, which I guess is an independent, which is an independent dice roll or independent roll, right? Independent spin. With Topps Chrome, technically, well, not technically, it, factually, there are a finite amount of cases, right? There's not an infinite amount of cases. So we can argue that, that it's, that a number like a super factor is due. Mathematically, I think, am I, am I doing this right? I think so, since there's a finite amount of cases, every box that we go through, every case that we go through where we don't see a super factor, one could argue that we're getting closer to a super fresh, a one of one. Of course, then again, we don't have a monopoly on all the cases. <laughs> so that makes that difficult as well. So I don't know. Maybe something special will happen. <laughs> yeah, Adam, this is pick your team two, which filled after three. So the break you were the hobby case you saw before when you was pick your team three, and when you came back, this is pick your team two. Box one of 12, settle in. Get yourself an adult beverage if you're into that sort of thing. Or if you're not, soft drink is fine too, either way, it's all good. Glass of milk perhaps, kick back and relax. And enjoy the soothing sounds of my golden voice and, uh, and packs being opened up, the, the gentle rustle of wrappers. Now you're good, good for you, Adam. Thanks for doing your part, appreciate it. All right, let's see what we got in here. Now in the interest of time, cards like this, 136 out of 199, this is uh, Alejandro Kirk for the Blue Jays, Coppola. We're just gonna set aside right here because our sorting and shipping team will sleeve and top load all of those. Autographs though, we'll take care of right away. Jorge Guzman, Marlins, Coppola. <laughs> this is work mandated, yeah. Well, you might as well get it out of the way. But yeah, uh, yeah. My my arm really hurt after shot one. I think it's worse on shot two. But I didn't like. I didn't feel. Aside from my arm, I don't think I feel. I 
think some people got like more of a flu-like reaction. I was okay after the first two shots, but it did feel like uh, did I get my left arm? I think it did feel like I was uh, I had played like a number of hours of tennis, or w had thrown like a hundred pitches with a heavy baseball. Uh, Andy Young, by the way, goes to Nathan with the Diamondbacks. And I'll try to try to spot as many of the short prints as possible, but if if I miss any, don't worry because uh, all card chip. And I'll do an autograph recap at the end. If you're watching this and you're like, I don't want to sit through an hour of this, if you're watching the replay of this on YouTube, you can fast forward to the towards the end until you see me do a uh, an autograph recap and maybe hits or parallels that are maybe 25 and under I'll show off as well or maybe Brian Hayes refractor is pretty cool too Josh Yost with the Pirates I'm gonna save one of those Rebel saying your arm was sore for an hour then you were fine wife's arm hurt for three days on both shots I did read somewhere that for whatever whatever reason, this may be for even regular flu shots as well, that, uh, that for, for whatever reason, women may have a stronger reaction to, to it. Um, no, my arm hurt, I got in the morning, hurt that afternoon. Yeah, I got Pfizer as well, hurt that afternoon. And, um, and then all day the next day, I mean, like, I could use it. It's not like my arm was, like, I was not, I wasn't, like, immobilized or anything like that. Like, like I could still do things, but, like, you can, you can be like, oh, you can, you can kind of tell that it was stiff. Like, kind of like maybe when you were kids or maybe even now when, uh, when people, you know, you, when you would get socked in the arm, it would kind of feel like that. So, so I was, it wasn't that bad. And then the day after that was fine. The second one, I think same time frame, but hurt a little bit more. But it wasn't that wasn't that bad either. Rebel about passed out after the first shot. You hate needles. Oh, okay. I I I think in my head I hate needles. But I didn't really look. I just kind of turned away <laughs> and didn't really think about it. And then it just was like a little pinch, and then it was like, oh, I was like, that's it? And they're like, yeah, done. I was like, okay. Jimmy, what's up? You felt weak and exhausted for a day and a half, and you got your second term. Your arm was red for a week. Huh. Uh, Oliver Soria, I think, in the chat said that, that he got his first or second and then went out and played golf. <laughs> he, was, he said that was a mistake. People, I, I know it's a big deal to some people. It was. It's not that bad, folks. You had a choice of all three? Wait, what's the third one? Pfizer, Johnson Johnson, AstraZeneca, maybe? Yeah, COVID shot didn't hurt as much as Rebels' steroid shots for poison ivy. Oh, Moderna. Forgot about Moderna. Moderna not drafted first in the COVID vaccine draft. There's Shane McClanahan. Shane McClanahan for the Rays. Tyler W. with the Tampa Bay Rays. This is box two, by the way. Looking for another two autographs, maybe some short prints. My my parents got Moderna. But I think the, I, some people I think people will make a big deal about what the differences are, Adam. But I think for for most people, 
I think the differences are negligible. Here's Eric Hosmer, 007 out of 199. Some aqua shimmer for Brian Peoples and his Padres. All right, that's how I felt about it, too. I was like, let's just get this over with. And there's Bobby Dalbeck. Nice Bobby Dalbeck autograph for Sean M. Sean M. won the Red Sox in that uh, in that filler pack break that we did before this just before this video, and it was rewarded with a Bobby Dalbeck who absolutely raked in uh, who absolutely raked in spring training. Hasn't really put it together in, in during the season, but, but he's he's got plenty of upside. <laughs> Adam can feel the pipe. That was one of my favorite sort of wacky conspiracy theory things, was that somehow the vaccine plus, plus 5G was, was going to, I don't know, was, was going to do something with something to do with, or maybe it was something to do with tracking or something like that. And I was just like, yeah, the 5G will definitely track you. You have a phone. Oh, get, Bill Gates is gonna put a put a tracker in. It's like there's a tracker on you already. It's your, it's your cell phone. The the privacy issues that are with like Android and Apple are significant. <laughs> the amount of data that they take from you. But we just go oh, whatever. Jose is saying, yeah, their phones are tracking us forever. So. If that's your argument for not getting a vaccine, I don't know, you might need a different argument. Yep. Exactly. You have a GPS device on you at all times. Exactly. I love it when people say that on like Twitter and then it has like a geotag on their tweet. <laughs> Bro, not getting the vaccine because they'd be tracking you, man. And then the geotag is like, Connecticut. <laughs> it's like, well, maybe, I mean, I'll find a different reason. That reason won't work though. Listen, if, 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 if there's like a religious thing or if there's like a medical thing or if it's, you know, personal preference, you don't want to, you just don't feel comfortable, get, I'll buy all of those. I'll be like, fine, I, I don't agree with it, but I'm not going to make a big deal about it. It's, it's your personal, it's your body, right? It's a personal choice. You know, just deal with whatever consequences that might come from that. No big deal, right? Like, I don't really, I don't really, you know, make a big deal out of it one way or the other, you know? But I will make a big deal. I, I will not buy the tracking argument. I'll be like, come on, that's just, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Here's Matt Foster, White Sox. That'll be Christopher Gerard with the White Sox. Jimmy, right. Your niece, Jimmy's niece says, I'm not getting because I don't know what's in it. <laughs> but yet she'll take any she'll she'll just do any kind of quote unquote medication from a random dude at a rave. <laughs> right, isn't that hilarious? I mean, it's, 
based off of it's based off of flu vaccine. <laughs> that people have been making flu vaccines for a little for a minute or two. There's Lewis Brinson to 350 fuchsia speckle. It's not like that they're. I know it's a different variant, but it's not like it was from scratch. True story, Jimmy says. Uh, there's Icopola in the Marlins. With that one. All right, next. Right, yeah, I want... I wonder if, if California is probably not too far behind that. We have laws you can't do anything indoors without like vaccines. You know they did that in I think they did that in France. I think they did that in Paris, right? I mean it's not it's not enforceable, is it? Are they actually ticketing people for that? They are ticketing. I mean, we're 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 lucky here in 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 Los Angeles where most people are vaccinated, so we don't have to we don't run into that issue. I think people are like, yeah, fine, we'll, we'll put on masks and blah 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 blah. But I don't know. I don't know if the, I mean at this point, like LSU games, proof of vax to get into football games. I think Raiders did that. I think Allegiant Stadium. You have to show proof of vaccination or else, uh, or I mean, you could, I think they're actually um, having COVID vaccinations on site if you want to. Saints are doing that too. And at the end of the day, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just a, it's just a real hassle. But such, such is the world in which we live, ladies and gentlemen. We just have to, just have to do what we think is right and keep on keeping on. Next box. And we got Shirt and Apostle, Texas. Patrick Davis with the Rangers. Yeah, vax rates, Gilo is saying in Missouri compared to Kansas here, bad in KC, that's interesting. We've got a Miguel Cabrera, first ballot Hall of Famer right here, Detroit, zoom in, 299. Josh Hader, blue wave to 75. That's going to go to Brian K. And 
And it's Lewin Diaz, Marlins, blue autograph, Coppola. Seventy six out of one fifty. Joplin's kind of a college college town though, isn't it, Rebel? Isn't it isn't it a college town or not? Maybe I'm thinking of some somewhere else in Missouri. A lot of my buddies in uh what's the is there is there a college there? What's the college there, Rebel? Kind of a big college, no? Missouri Southern State University, maybe not. I feel like I have a lot of, like half of my fancy baseball league um, is, is some, has a Joplin, Missouri connection for some reason, and they want to do a draft in Joplin, a baseball draft in Joplin someday. Yeah, I think I think there's there's a lot of growing anger in Sheila. These <laughs> people, ah, it is what it is. This is this is the bed we've made. I was saying, isn't Lake of the Ozarks there? I'm not familiar with the geography. I want to visit the Ozarks someday. And the Smoky Mountains. I want to check out. And the Appalachians. Any part of the Appalachians. I guess north of the Smoky Mountains. Are the Smoky Mountains part of the Appalachian Mountain Range? Don't know. I'll check them out. Another box. And another two autographs. And we got a Tyson Miller. It's a nice bold autograph there for the Cubbies. Sean A, last spot mojo, strikes again. TMI. And then we've got a Kyle Tucker, purple chrome to 299. Yeah, I want to. This, we need a super here. Still have not seen a super yet. There's a green wave Josh Bell, 80 out of 99 for the Pirates. Josh Yost with Josh Bell. There's Mark Matthias. I'm not even talking a super auto. I, just a regular, just a non auto super is fine too. 203 out of 4.99. Uh, that's a Brewer. It's going to go to Brian K. What's the per pack cost of Topps Chrome this year? I don't know. <laughs> well, it might be on our other website, Adam, or uh, Travis, that is. Or Adam was asking that question, sorry. I think if you go to jaspies.com where our personal breaks are, uh, you, you should be able to see our per box price and then just divide for pack, or we might be selling some stuff by the pack. There's a Brian Hayes Hyper. Going to Josh and the Pirates. All right, super search continues.
You know, the weird thing with 2021 baseball is that there really hasn't been, like, a clear-cut rookie that has been lighting it up or at least capturing the imagination of, of collectors in the way that, say, Aaron Judge did or Otani did, you know, or even Vlad Guerrero Jr. did, you know. So it really hasn't been that player yet, but this 2021 stuff um, gives – gives me the feeling that that a rookie will emerge maybe like a, a season or two later and then people will be wanting to come back to twenty revisit 2021 product. No. Um, uh, yes. It's yeah, 24 packs per box. Four cards per pack. And I don't know what I don't I don't know what the jumbo configuration is. Maybe half that. I know, I'm not saying load up on cases. I'm just saying, I'm just saying if you're if you're kind of, you know, kind of down on 2021 baseball. I'm just trying to give you silver lining. Jimmy, what's that? So is Fanatics going to have the rights to the big three sports, or is it just baseball and basketball? They have the rights to the big three sports. They've got the they've got um, the exclusive license to all three major players associations: MLB, NBA, and NFL. Kids these days are getting raw. They don't they don't know any better, Adam. You don't like you know how many kids come into our shop buying buying boxes and packs. They have they have no reference point. Yeah, Travis, people have mentioned that too, that, that it seems a little more pitcher heavy this year in Chrome. I don't know, which might make the hitters just that much better. There's not as many, so it could be a could be a good supply and demand thing. Like Joe Adele starts going off in the next couple seasons. Mm, I wouldn't say it's a bad thing if it's pitcher heavy, but it's one sixty at three ninety nine. But pitchers don't sell as well on the secondary market. So some may consider it a bad thing. They're kind of like wide receivers. There's just a lot. There's like, what, four or five wide receivers on any, every football team. Why do quarterbacks sell better? There's 32. It's only 32 starting quarterbacks out there. So same with similar to, to football where, where there's a lot more wide receivers. So... So they don't sell as well on the secondary market as compared to like quarterbacks. We've got uh, Tehe Anton or TJ or TJ Anton. I'm gonna go with TJ Anton. That's Henry with the red legs. Right. That that's what's u unique about Otani is that. Is that he is a more of an everyday player who's hitting and pitching, as opposed to just a every five day starting pitcher who happens to be good with the bat. He's playing every day. There's Edward Oliveras, rookie auto for the Royals. That'll be for Ryan D. But. Uh, I guess a basketball example would maybe be, I don't know, there's a lot of guards, right? So 
So was Ruth really the last guy before him to be that? I mean, I, yeah. Because usually, baseball-wise, if you're a kid and you can hit or you can pitch, if you can do both, you're 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 just through high school and college, or if you get drafted out of high school, you're you're you have to pick one. The, the general rule of thumb, and just historically, it's been pick one because you can't do both. So it's just like just fo focus 100% on pitching or just focus 100% on hitting or something like that. Kids at a young age, you know, pro probably probably by the time you're signed as a pro, even if it's out of high school, even if you can, you're can, you a pitcher that can hit a little bit, I think they'll, they'll have you go 100% one way or the other. Strictly a pure hitter or you're going to be a pitcher. So if you're starting pitcher... Right, you're you're on the you're on the bump once every five days, and in between you're just working on your arm. You're doing bullpen sessions. You're doing whatever, you know, practice and whatnot, conditioning and stuff. That's usually the the starting pitcher lifestyle. But what Otani is doing is unique because he's playing pretty much every day. So the every five days, or, or maybe I think they might give him a little extra day, but either way, he's pitching once a week, and he's hitting on those days, and he's also hitting on his non-pitching days, and he has 41 home runs. He's leading the league. I mean, he's, he's a modern-day Babe Ruth, yeah. If you want a living example of what, and imagine what Babe Ruth was like back in the day, you just look at Shohei Otani. Tani's doing is pretty special. There's Nick Heath. Yeah. Well, I mean, Travis, that day he first off that day he's hitting. He's throwing 70, 70 to 80 pitches. He's going like six, seven innings in a game. That's the 499. That's for the Royals, by the way, Nick Heath. Yeah, and right. And then the next day, you're like, oh, he's back in the lineup, top of the top of the lineup. Still hitting dingers. It's crazy. Royals, Ryan, Ryan D with that one. That's Ryan. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty special. Ooh, some orange. Got orange Lance McCullers Jr., 9 out of 25. And a Dane Dunning. Chris Gerard with the White Sox. Orange McCullers going to I. Coppola, Houston Astros. Well, yeah, that's the whole point, Adam. Yeah, how do you have power to hit after pitching full games? Well, before he couldn't. I think in the, you know, I think injuries were a big problem for him. I think in Japan, they play far fewer games. So the just the sheer length of the season is, is grueling, especially if you're not used to it. So I think there was just a lot of injuries that broke him down. So like when people were collecting his rookie cards, they were really hot his rookie year. And then as Gilo's mentioning, like they they were they the prices over the next couple of years just really tanked because he was just always injured. He was just was not playing well, blah 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 blah. 
But there is a great, if you dig around the old interwebs, there's a great article on The Athletic, maybe a couple other places too, that talk about how he just overlapped this most recent offseason, how he completely rebuilt his, his body essentially. After, he, I think it was probably his first season, at the end of last season, it was probably the first season he's had that he wasn't getting surgery or rehabbing from a surgery or something like that. So he took that opportunity to to completely reconstruct his body just just so he can do the whole pitching hitting thing at the same time and just survive the the entire season i think a lot of it was um lower body stuff you know so i think it was him just strengthening his back strengthening his legs his hips you know i think he i think he went to like there's like a Famous baseball hitting academy, maybe, in the Pacific Northwest or something like that, where he kind of rebuilt his swing a little bit to be just more efficient, so it wouldn't be as exhausting, that kind of thing. Yeah, he was kind of skinny before. He's, he's taller than people think, too. He's really tall, like 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, but look at his rookie year. He's a little, yeah, he's a little slender. But especially his lower body, his legs, you know, that's where you get the, the power and, 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 the, and the pitching part of it too. A lot of it comes from the legs. And so I think that was the big thing, was just like kind of reconstructing his, his body so he can just be more efficient and then be able to survive the entire season. You know? Right, yeah, Ichiro did a similar thing. You know, they're pretty disciplined about, about like, you know, their body. And Nitro, yeah, Nitro played forever. So if Otani can do that, I mean, Otani cards might be cheap now. Imagine if you can do this for another 15 years. Right, and he's got, I think Travis Melberg saying he can steal with the best of them. Travis, I think he's faster than Mike Trout. I think Trout's pretty quick, but I think Otani's home to first. Uh, I think he's a little bit faster than Trout. Is Matt Olson fuchsia to three ninety nine? But this season was a was a big comeback for him for sure. I think if. Uh, I mean, yeah, you might as well. If you if you want to hold on to some of his rookies, I don't think that's a bad investment. the The hope is, the hope is uh, that this is just a one time thing. If he can continue staying healthy the rest of this season, keep working on 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 his body, and do this again next season. Because right now, I feel like the sense I get from people is that it's like okay. Welcome back, Otani. I'm glad the prices, the values are back up on Otani. There's Ramon Laureano Greenway for the A's, Ben. But they're like, are you going to do this next season? <laughs> should I sell now? Or should I, is this time to hold? And I think that's the, that's the interesting, interesting sort of internal struggle that people are having with themselves. Um, that is... That is uh, Franklin Colon. Oh, Colome. That'll be for uh, Kyle Cook and the Mets. There's Kyle Lewis. Black and white. For the M's. Zoom in. So, like, are, are, we, are, we, are we bears on the Otani market? Are we bulls on the Otani market? Hoddle? To the moon? Who knows? That's the fun. That's the fun part about the hobby. An Astro, an Andre Scrub, purple chrome autograph. Forty-six out of two fifty for Capola and the Strohs. All right, getting there. Four boxes to go. Definitely, definitely dragging here a little bit. Mm. 
Yeah, that's that's not that's not a bad one to yeah. Adam's like, hey, next week I'll I'll try and pick up a PSA ten of his tops rookie. Ba only baseball card that you'll own. That's, if that's the only one you own, that's that's not bad. You still have it, Gilo? Gilo saying he bought a PSA ten Otani last year for seventy bucks. Yeah, I remember that we were that we had some some in the shop that we were pricing anywhere between fifty and eighty dollars. No one was buying them. I should have bought them. You know, believe it or not, the hands are fine. My hands, I've got pretty strong hands. Um, it's more more like the, the shoulder area will kind of, upper back area will kind of get a little sore at the end of, uh, at the end of, this is like the end of my week, it's my Friday, so. So yeah, so both my voice and get a little sore. Hands are pretty strong, you know, pretty strong hands. Guitar player for for a long time, still play. You know, played a lot of tennis when I was a kid. So like the hands, forearms, wrists are pretty strong. I want to say. Yeah, sometimes maybe the shoulders. That's where the, that's where it gets a little sore. Just because I'm, I, I'm not resting my hands, you know, on, on the table. I'm actually, I actually have, yeah, I actually have my arms lifted up the entire time. And I'm standing, you know. Yeah, I don't know how you rip open, you know, cases of magic. There's so many cards and tacks in there. I mean, I suppose you could do that more leisurely. You know, I, I've got to at least be a little efficient in this break so this video isn't like two hours long. Oh, nice Joey Bart for my rivals, the Giants. Jose with the Giants on the board. Won the Giants in that team random. Supposed to be future Buster Posey, they're hoping. Nelson Cruz, black and white. Another one for, uh, or that's for the Twins, that is. Sorry, not for the M's, Twins. Jeremy Taylor with the Twins. I don't think I've seen a, a short print yet. Maybe, I, may I, all cards ship, so if I missed one, sorry. All cards will ship, but I just thought I'd see one by now. 75 out of 75, or one that would jump out at me. Albert Pujols, uh, Angels edition. Blue Wave going to Chris Gerard and that silver Mike Trout will go to you as well. The Mike Trout, eight, what, 86, 85, 86 refractor. There's Mark Kana, 125 out of 199. Aqua Wave for Ben and the A's. And then an orange, orange auto maybe? Orange auto for the A's. That's Dalton Jeffries. There you go, Ben S with the Athletics. Nice, seven out of 25, orange auto. Maybe the orange, nice little jaspy orange, looks really sharp. Popping out of these sets. All right, three boxes go. We're almost there. Thank you. Almost there. Stay on target. We'll do an autograph recap at the end as well. The magic stuff, Adam S. is saying that's your most expensive collection because your dual your dual lands from your teenagers. I'm assuming that's a set. I know that the. I mean, if you think like the hobby, like the value out of the hobby, the secondary market stuff has gone crazy. You know, there's there's Pokemon and 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 Magic Gathering cards, MTG cards. Oh, it's from the first set. Okay, yeah, those can be those can be crazy. Was it the who opened the uh, 
was it the Paul brothers on YouTube or somebody on YouTube who had ripped open an entire, had bought an entire sealed case of of the first Pokemon edition, first edition Pokemon is like is like a hundred thousand dollar case or maybe more. I don't know. Someone did that like in the last year. I kept those old Pokemon cards. I might have some old Pokemon cards. I think maybe from like the the second printing, not the original printing, but I think the second printing are still still okay. And uh, I think I like I played with them. I goofed around with them. So like I don't know. The surface grades are probably terrible. I think some I could still sell raw for like 30, 40 bucks, something like that. Nothing too crazy though. Travis, what's up? With Fanatics, Travis Melberg's asking, with Fanatic talking, mon taking, uh, or monopolizing the card market, is that going to help or hurt the hobby in my opinion? That's a big question that's hovering around, around everybody, Travis. We tend to, Jaspie's, I tend to be an optimist and a capitalist, right? So my thought is that why would fanatics spend all this money getting the licenses of all this sort of stuff and essentially get a get the golden goose of all these licenses and then intentionally or not intentionally, or, or, and screw it up. Like it's too valuable for them to screw it up. So you would think that it would be in their best interest to, to do a good job. So I think that, uh, I'm hoping that it'll be good for, I think I'm hoping that'll be good for the hobby. Well, yeah, and I was just about to touch upon that, Adam. Adam is right. I think the speculation is, um, and this is something that we've discussed internally as well, you know, I think the common theory, I mean, I don't know if that's really, Adam's calling it, I don't know if that's a hot take. I think I think a lot of people are, are discussing that. I think a lot of people are, are assuming that, that in the next year or two or three that they're just going to buy Tops and Panini outright or, or even better, you know what I would do? Forget Panini. I would buy Tops, right, and Upper Deck. There's the Mariners. Zoom in. Or I mean, all three. Why not all three at that point? But, but that's that's that that would is the that's the thing that would make sense. To buy those existing manufacturers, that already have decades of experience in the hobby you know and then just say hey continue doing what you would do you know ooh nice Joe Adele fuchsia speckle angels it's for Chris Gerard so then uh, essentially it's 106 out of 350 for the angels essentially it would be like you know a future set could be tops chrome 2025 tops chrome baseball and like on the bottom be like a fanatics company or something like that and the little logos right here something like that there's jared uh oliva for the pirates that'll be for josh yost well that's what i'm saying right imagine if upper deck still had basketball if you're if you're fanatics you know, you're you're talking every day to the family that owns Upper Deck because I think it's still privately owned. I think it's still a family-owned business. If you're fanatics, you're just like, imagine bringing back Exquisite after how long? I don't know, however long it's been since the last Exquisite basketball set's been out. Next box. That would be huge. And I 
think you know pe the people who are who are who are uh, po you know kind of thinking more positive about about the hobby. And, I, and for the most part, Jaspies is we've been around for a while, and the boss man has been around for a while. Nick's dad, Nick Jaspies' dad, has been around for a while. And he's seen it all, you know. So, so I think I think it'll be I think it'll be fine. I think the you, some some people have argued, hey, maybe that means with Fanatics' existing relationships with players. Right, and with the amount of money they played for the licensing, right? People are hoping maybe Redemptions will be a non-existent thing. You know, Fanatics is already in the jersey game, right? So maybe it'll be easier for them to get game use jerseys. And we know exactly, you know, you know, you have just more provenance. You know exactly where these relics came from. It's not a generic game use material kind of thing. Maybe that, maybe the relic game gets stepped up. You know, you know how in tops you'll see those hologram stickers. Maybe that'll be a more common thing. Fanatics authenticated stickers. You know, Fanatics already had their authentication stickers. Imagine having that on every piece of every piece of jersey that you get. Imagine if there's more specific dates on where a piece of Jason Tatum's uniform came from. You know, piece of his jersey. Even if it's a napkin, even it's a one color patch. Imagine having that extra little bit. I think that changes. I think that there's there's a lot of game changing potential here, quality wise. So I don't know. It'll it'll be interesting. There are a lot of people who, and mostly these people are people that don't know what they're talking about. But I think a lot of people are are like, you know, thinking that oh, like Tops is dead or like Panini's gonna go away or something like that. And I was like, I was like, no. <laughs> I think Fanatics is just going to try to do everything from scratch. I mean, I'm sure they'll, they'll be like Fanatics branded products, you know what I mean? But, you know, in the way that Target has Target branded stuff, right? Target cleaning spray, you know, is still there, but they'll, they're still selling the name brand one, which is what you're probably going to buy, you know? I mean, I mean, you can go a thousand different ways here, but ultimately, I think as a hobby shop and as a as a group breaker, I think we're, I think it's tentatively we're thinking it's going to be interesting. It'll be a different relationship, you know. But we'll see, we'll see how it works out. For Jaspies personally, I know that we've got some, you know, like I said, Nick's dad's been in the hobby forever, so, so for us as a business. Without saying too much, you know we we have a, we have at least working relationships with a lot of the the big companies, including Fanatics and kind of higher ups at those companies as well. So, you know, we're doing our due diligence to make sure that we're in the right spot, not only for us but to serve you guys as well, all all, all the collectors here at Jaspies. It's David Peterson. 170 out of 350. I think the people that are kind of concerned, that should be concerned maybe, are the uh, are the distributors. The, the, the middlemen, I think, was probably the... is probably... Um, probably the most concerned, I would think, all the big distribution companies. Because so, if you're if you're big, bad fanatics, right? You've, you've seen you've seen companies like Topps and Panini go try to experiment with like direct selling. Maybe the distributors are probably the most concerned, I would imagine, speculating, but it's not hard to put two and two together. <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, is the middleman the reason product is getting price gouged? I mean, That I don't know. I, 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 think, I think it probably, over the years, in the long run, I'll bet it evens out when you, when you, you know, look at the books for the last 20 years or something like that. All right, the second auto. Rookie Autograph Aqua. 
So the nice little nice little color. C, Chicago, Cincinnati, Chicago, Chicago, Cubs, White Sox, White Sox, Garrett Crochet, Chicago White Sox. Uh, Chris Gerard with that aqua parallel. There you go. And a free top loader. But yeah, the distribution of the product, I think, is going to be the interesting thing. What's going to happen there? No one knows. I mean, we can speculate, which, we are, which we're doing now. We can speculate the entire time. All this is speculation. I don't know, who knows? Finice could be terrible for the hobby. <laughs> and it'll kill the golden goose. You know? I don't think they, I don't think they will, though. But they want to make money, too, right? They're capitalists. They want to make money. Is direct better for us? Maybe. I don't know. We don't do a lot of direct buying, so I don't. We don't. I don't know what that environment's gonna feel like. Especially considering if you're just buying direct from one company, right? They can just set the market on whatever they want to. Adam, what if you were? What if you were? What if there was only one person, one company in the entire United States that that made milk to uh, to stock your shelves? You could charge however many, however much money they want if they have the market. Probably is a limit of how much the consumer would pay for milk, so I mean, that would obviously balance itself out. So. Yeah, I mean, are there monopoly laws in place? Yeah. Antitrust stuff? Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, like the Department of Justice has a lot to worry about. I, mean, I don't know. It depends on it depends on how uh, how I guess what is it vertically integrated this is. I mean, are they gonna, they, they, li they bought the licenses, then they buy the companies, then they buy the factories that print these things, the big factories in Texas. I mean. What, what, I have, to, I have to think about my 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 economics, but I mean, if you're if you're integrated that way and you're controlling controlling distribution and all that sort of stuff, yeah, then, then yeah, there there could be issues like that that they have, would have to be concerned about. So maybe they don't cut out distributors, right? Maybe they keep maybe they keep the distrib distribution in the loop so they don't have to run into those issues. It's tr it's tricky. You know, when ooh, an orange auto, Tyson Miller, Cubs, Sean A, last spot mojo. So it'll be interesting if they're, just, if they're like, hey, we're, we're, th we're throwing our, our, we're swinging our big checkbook around, right? You know, we're buying, we're else. buying, a, I know, I was going to say something else, but it's a, it's a family show, though. It's night. still a family there's, show. Kids, no family kids city. still watch. Kids are, kids are going to be watching this <laughs> 60 minute video. Uh, official last case. Is that our last jumbo case? Yeah, you, you just bought the last one again. All right. So, so just heads up. Uh, I don't think I have any more jumbo I, on I our, on I our site. Him, I did the two last night, and I asked him, did you want me to reload it? And he said no. So we should be good. Uh, yeah, just let just, just let Nick know where what our status is on okay. on uh, on case quantity. Maybe Phil will get the uh, the super. There's Taylor Jones, Astros autograph. That's it. Those are our two autos. All right. Short prints, maybe. A Super Fractor, still holding out hope. All right. Stroh's, that's for Coppola. Nice break for you. Thanks, everybody, for getting into the action. A nice little bit of conversation. We managed to talk about a lot of things and keep things civil, which is amazing. I, I, think, I think we have more opportunity to do that later at night. 74 out of 99, later at night anyway. Uh, 
Giancarlo Stanton to 99. Maybe it's because more adults are up later. <laughs> Awake later. Kids have gone to bed. Thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. I appreciate all your support. Listen, don't worry about fanatics. Jaspies, we are not intending to go anywhere because I have nothing else to do. What am I going to do? Get a real job? I, this is it. Nick and I have no choice. We have to make this work. So that's why we're going to keep working hard for ourselves. And we're going to keep working hard for you. And hopefully and continue to have some fun talking sports and collecting and all this sort of stuff. That's what we're doing. That's what we're trying to do. That's it. It's pretty simple. We keep it simple here at Jaspies. I'm Joe Jaspie. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great night. We'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.